pieces is going to have its own perfect load. So we want to take a look at them one at a time. Load number one is our line work load. This is the most important load that you will learn. I like to use uh, number four, but really your favorite round brush will do. You want to take a lot of water and kind of deposit it in one of these troughs. Now you can do this on a totally flat cake, but whenever I have a flat black cake, it always ends up looking like this. Now I am not brushing up and down like I would a one stroke, and I'm not swirling my brush. I am going down over and over again and then I'm also twirling my brush. It's almost a full spin for every time I draw down. Now on a really busy day, this one might be super wet, this one's medium wet, and this one's almost perfect. And I can just go down until I get the perfect load. Now how do you tell when your load is perfect? There are three things you wanna pay attention to. First, you wanna pay attention to what it looks like. So I often watch while I'm loading. Watch for it to become creamy. And I can see if it's pooling and really wet. The next way that you can tell, feel it with your hands. So close your eyes and feel the tension that the bristles are giving you. If it's just running right through, it's too wet. If you're having to drag it along, it's too dry. A slow slip is kind of what you want. And then the third thing is the way that it looks when you paint on the paper. A too wet load is going to look super watery and it'll also look thin. You don't get a very dark black color. When your load is too dry, it won't lay down a lot of paint. The paint it does lay down will be very dark, but then you get this. One of the reasons I love going for the perfect load is because it lets me paint for a really long time. Maybe it's getting a little thin, and so you're thinking, okay, I need to reload, but actually you don't. We have a lot of paint that's really well loaded still in the middle of our brush. If you lay your brush down more, you're able to get another nice line. Turn it a quarter turn, lay down again, it's nice. Quarter turn, lay down, it's nice. If you spin your brush, then you don't have to flip and look how dark that was. And this is all from a single load. But if I had reloaded here on this third brush stroke, look at all of this paint that I would have been wasting and all of the time that I will spend reloading. I just want you to see how much paint is in a single load. And when you're painting on skin, it doesn't suck the water out quite as bad as paper does. But you can see there is a lot of paint in a single load. So that is how to get a perfect load for your line work. Start with a lot of water and spinning, and then I move to my next one and go and spin. It's definitely worth the time. Load two is for the details. We want to work with a much smaller brush, maybe a number two or a zero. We want enough water that our brush can really go fine and free. And dots work best when there's enough water to be like a drip. So you can go along and add a lot of little dots with a single load. And doing those little stars, we want to have good flicks. And a flick, again, we want that paint to move. And the paint can only move if it has enough water to slide across the skin. If you have something that you've already painted, you can go in and you can add those highlights. Because the paint is thin, we're able to just move really quick and smooth to add those little extra bits in. So remember, we want to start with a good amount of water and we want to just pull it around until it's nice and opaque, but it's still just a little bit on the runny side. The teardrop load. We want to work that paint until it's nice and creamy, but we want to make sure that we have a lot of paint that's in that stage. I like to get it almost kind of goopy. If you paint it thin on top, it will show the underneath color through. By having a really thick paint and a lot amount of paint, you can do crisper and clearer teardrops. Do you see how there is extra paint pooling on either side of my brush and I'm able to pull it across? Now if this load is too thin, that paint will bleed. If it's too thick, your teardrop will have that dry, patchy, wispy look. And you can see by the time we get to this one down here that it's starting to get a little bit dry. You can re-dampen the tip of your brush and just re-teardrop over the top and clean up that last teardrop to make it really good. Do you see all that paint that's still there waiting to get picked up? We don't have to go back to our water, and then we're able to go back in and paint in some more of those teardrops. The fourth perfect load that I want everybody to be confident in is the one stroke load. Get your brush wet, but then scrape off a little bit of the extra moisture. We don't want there to be any water pooling on the top of our brush. 
we're going to load in one direction, but it's still pretty thin. So then we turn our brush because of course it's important that we don't swap the color sides. So we flip up, load, flip down, up, flip, load. We now have loaded about halfway up our bristles. There's still a lot of space, but it doesn't really matter how many times we go up and down and up and down and up and down. We're not really gonna get there. I don't know if you've ever had the experience of painting a butterfly wing and then all of a sudden there's this extra water. It comes from these bristles up here that have no paint in them, but are full of water. So watch right above the paint line what happens when we touch down. And not only do I touch down, but I'll bend. And do you see that water rises and then gets sucked out down into here? We still have some paint that's loaded, but the tips are now pretty wet. And so I'll come in and I will do a second load over that first one. Now look how much more paint. The tip of our brush is ready to paint on. And back here, we have some paint that's even just kind of sitting out on top waiting, and all of that paint is the same consistency. So we're able to just go on and paint and paint and keep painting and painting over and over and over. Even as I push down, you see all of that paint that's still there inside of this brush. Load five that we need to go over is double loading a brush for petals. Now this is gonna be our last load and the reason that I included it is because it feels so different than any other load that you'll do. So we want it to be thick, think of this as a teardrop consistency, but just really load up that brush. Then just like a one stroke, you wanna just wipe off the tip of your brush. You don't want the white there and you don't want the extra water. You want it to be nice and dry. One of the tricks that I use to load is take a drip of water from the back of a brush and just stripe it along the paint of the dark color you're going to use. And then you can take the dry tip that you've got here and you can just wiggle and dip it into a corner somewhere. I'm not really one that likes huge spots of white in the middle of my cake, plus the edges often have leftover water from a previous load. So it lets me get a really nice dark color. I'll even sometimes just spin my tip right in. And that this load gives you that graduated really dark tip medium pink to a white. With that load, you're able to do whatever detail work you're doing, but usually it's a pretty flower load. Now, sometimes with your flower load, you get this little weird spot over here. Just turn your brush and just go once more and it will just finish up that petal. Mm -hmm.